Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Marcus again. And I'm continuing my presentation on the color of hell, or the trick of evil. If you missed it, flip back through your video section and watch it. This is part two. And I've been thinking about heaven and hell. When Raz dies, it turns to dirt, and the life of it goes back to the wind. When a rat or an, any animal dies, its body turns to dirt, and its life goes back to the wind. When humans die, their body turns to dirt, and the life goes back to the wind. And when I say go back to the wind, I mean it goes back to its source. And since its source is invisible, I call it the wind. Real, but invisible. And so, where does the idea of heaven come from? Well, it serves as a pacifier to ward off the fear of death. People are afraid to die. So you, if you believe that you're going to go to a wonderful place when you die, it takes away some of the fear. It serves to challenge the living to live a certain type of life. Cause no trouble, and you are rewarded in a heavenly life, unattainable in the flesh. But cause trouble, and you end up in hell as your reward. However, to believe this, you must believe that you were alive in another life before you came here. Something that you haven't been told because there's never been a need or reason to suggest such. You see, before, there was a reason. They want to conduct your life, control your life, but after death, they don't tell you anything other than you go to heaven or you go to hell. But other than that, they don't have any need to control your life after death. So they leave that alone. But nothing here that I've said in regards to this is provable. Nothing is provable. But this much I do know and it is provable. And that is that while living on earth, in this body, people experience hell and heaven. And the power to experience either is in the hands of you, the people. The conclusion here is the only heaven or hell that one can be certain of is this life on this earth now and I want you to know that there is a prescription for each of you that produces the desired result heaven and to do that is you respect the unseen power that is responsible for everything that is seen. And in order to do that, you do it by respecting what that unseen power has created. Especially people. Because you yourselves know that you got to have respect. And who amongst you think you deserve respect when others don't? Well, if you can come to that point in your life, then you're okay. But if you cannot respect the unseen power, then you cannot respect people. And after not respecting people, you will have all the hell you can measure. We live in a world where they talk good, but they live contradictory to the good they speak. We live in a world where people believe that they do have superiority over others. But I want you to look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Not a single soul brought anything on this earth. Food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, and all everything else was here before you got here. All the minerals of the earth, 
that is used to do the things that we do, that on the earth, in the earth, or above the earth. It was already here. You brought nothing with you but your body. A body that was instilled with a lust, a desire to do something, to play a part in your living. Every last one of you came with that. And when you die, you leave that. And you leave everything else here. Everything. Because nothing belongs to you. Nothing. So to fantasize that a race of people, a nation of people, a religion of people makes them superior to others is a trick of evil. And it is a color of hell. Because with that attitude, you are going to get war, terrorism, crime, violence, poverty, and you name it. And in the midst of that, there's going to be somebody rich. And you're going to find somebody calling themselves God's representative. You're going to say they're down, what, on the same lineage of God. They're going to be called king. They're going to be called queen. They're going to be called president. They're going to be called popes. They're going to be called preachers and elders. They're going to call every little thing they can to separate themselves to be bigger and better than you. That's what they're going to do. And when somebody tries to support their activities as being superior to the activities of anyone, they are something that you should be leery of. Because whatever you do, you're doing it for either the benefit of humanity or yourself. And if it works for humanity, we would all say it's good because nobody suffers. But if it's for yourself, everybody suffers but you. So I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, God has given me the responsibility of sharing with you what I have shared. I used to go to different churches all over the country and I was received because I spoke what they spoke. I spoke the word of God as they said, the Bible. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. That's what the Bible says. And when I went up on the pulpit, I said to you, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. With you, I wanted you to know that if you ask, that you would receive from God, according to the Bible. But I had to go a step further. I tried it. I asked, and some things I got, I asked, and other things I didn't get. So I couldn't come to you and tell you to be relaxed with the statement that the Bible says, asking it shall be given, because my experience taught me that sometimes it wasn't. And for me to be honest with you, I had to tell you the truth as I knew it. Somebody said, if you want to know some, try it. If it works, then you can tell somebody it works. If it doesn't work, then you can tell them it doesn't work. If it works sometimes and other times it doesn't, then you can tell them that too. So i rather tell you what I have tried to be true. People have told you all kinds of things about the Bible. And yet the world that we live in is representative as if there is no Bible. There is no God. Everybody got their own concept of God, Methodist or Catholic, Protestant, and that can mean Baptist, Methodist, oh, so many you just, and you know why all of them exist? Because they're in contradiction to one another. Yet, millions and millions of people are wrapped up in each one of them, and our world is going straight to hell. You know it is. So I say to you, why are you listening to that junk? Because it is nothing but junk. If it's not working, it's junk. Now somebody said, well, nobody's listening to me. Is mine junk? No, mine isn't junk. Why isn't it junk? Because you haven't proved it. You haven't proven it to be junk. Why? What do I mean? I mean you haven't tried it. You've tried everything else, but you haven't tried treating people like you wanted to be treated. You haven't tried resisting evil when it comes in and put his heavy foot on your head. You just bend your head down. Promise that if you just stay down, and don't fight back that when you die, God's going to bless you. That seems like the biggest lie that ever come out anywhere. What kind of God would create you to go through hell? No, I'm going to tell you something about God, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to close. God is smart. 
God has given us everything. Given us the potential to create hell and heaven. That is in our hands. In a sense, God has put himself in us so that each of us can be a part of God. And when we come together, we represent the God, the body of God. That's what God has done. And God closed the door and went on doing other things. All the things. We can get off our knees praying to God. No, we can. If you want to talk to God, talk to your inner side. God has given us everything we need. Created hell if you are evil and low down and dirty. Or heaven if you are compassionate. Hey, so what's with this heaven thing? You're going to sit here and be good. All of a sudden, I'm going to receive you in heaven. For what? Can you imagine how many people have lived during these times? And somebody will say, well, heaven is big enough. God is big enough to create. Look, if there was a time that man didn't exist, there can be a time when so many doesn't exist or none exist. So this thing that he got to have you, no, my friend, I think that we are living for our own benefit. God has given us the chance to live good and bad. I used to think that homosexuality was something that God was disgusted with. They told me that Sodom and Gomorrah was filled with that junk and God burned it up. But with me, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what made God decide to make a man except what man does. I can't tell you why God decided to make a woman except what women do. And if I see a man acting like another, acting like a woman, I can't tell you nothing about that either, that he acts like a woman. If I see a woman acting like a man, only thing I can tell you about that is that that's a woman acting like a man. I can't start telling you what's wrong about stuff like that. I know it's different. But by George, if I start telling you the dip, what's right and wrong about homosexuality, then I can start telling you all kinds of things that is out of my line, out of my realm of knowledge. And so what I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this, to make a long story short, and if I die tonight, I want to tell you you're being deceived. You are being deceived. But God is not responsible. Yo deception is of your own making you don't have to be deceived you have learned how to do good you have learned how to do bad you have learned the difference between the two you can do good and you can resist somebody doing you evil now to me that's what loving God is to me that's what loving humankind is it might be wrong, but that's what I understand. And this is what I share with you. I share it with you because through it, every human being on earth can be happy. Somebody say, well, Eddie, what if a man's desire is to kill you, just kill you? Then I say to you, I do believe that every human being got a chance or the right to defend themselves. So if a man is planning on killing you, I say, let him try. And when he tries it, if you fight back, I guarantee you'll kill him. Why? Because right is on your side. But now, if you treat people right, unless a person is demonically possessed, and how do I know that? It's because he tries to destroy any and everything that's good. He'll try to do that. But if you are good, if you are on the right track, they will always lose. They will always lose. Always. Now, I stayed a little longer than I had planned to on that. And I hope you haven't changed the set. And I hope you will listen to both parts. And I hope that I haven't wasted my time. I hope you get something. And God bless you. Bye-bye.